أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بدين الحق ليظهر ولدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاطئ ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فاتقوا الله يا عباد الله أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى Verily all praises are for Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise Him and we glorify Him and we thank Him and we seek His help and His assistance and His guidance and we ask His forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our hearts and from the wickedness of our actions whomsoever Allah guides there is no one to misguide and he who is led to go astray there is no one to bring back on the right path I testify to his oneness that he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one the absolute one and I further testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final and last messenger whom he has sent with guidance and with the religion of truth that it will prevail among all other religions and Allah is sufficient as a witness to that Allah the Almighty says in his holy book all those who believe or believers fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ought to be feared and do not die except that you die in a state of Islam submission to the will of Allah as Muslims and Allah for the states all those who believe fear Allah and speak words of righteousness he will direct you to do good deeds he will rectify for you your deeds and forgive you your sins and whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger verily he will gain ultimate salvation as to what proceeds today on this blessed day of Jummah in this sacred month of Dhul Qadr, let it be known of gathering of Muslims that the best of speech is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the worst of affairs are those that are innovated in the religion and every innovation is a misguidance and every misguidance leads you to the fire of Jahannam so revere Allah Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by putting a barrier between you and the wrath of Allah. By putting a barrier between you and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By inducing in the hearts the awareness of Allah. By inducing in the hearts the God consciousness of Allah. By inducing in the hearts the taqwa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know that Allah is ever watching over you. And he hears and he sees and he knows the secrets of the hearts or gathering of Muslims verily we are in the months of Hajj Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam is one of the foundation of this glorious religion of Islam as commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says in his holy words وَلِلَّهِ الْعَنَّاسِ هِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ إِسْتَطَاعِ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا And it is a binding duty upon mankind 
that they should perform their pilgrimage for those who have the affordability. And the scholars of Islam, they have explored the verses of Allah and the Hadith and the meaning of affordability is those who have the financial means and the physical ability. They have the physical health and strength and they have the financial means that they should undertake the Hajj. It's a binding duty upon them and they should not delay for year after year or they wait on a special occasion. When I'm 30 years old, I will do it. Or when I reach my 25 years old, or when I reach my 40th anniversary, or my 50th year, or my 60th year, and they keep on delaying, delaying. And it is due and binding duty upon you, al al fawri means immediately. In other words, as soon as you have the conditions fulfilled, your financial means, and your physical health and strength, then you have to go. If you love Allah, and you love this religion, then it's the binding duty that you fulfill this commandment of Allah. The way you fulfill your salah five times a day, and the way you fast in Ramadan once every year, and you give your zakah once every year, two and a half percent of your wealth. Hajj is only once in your lifetime. Binding duty upon you for the affordability. But for those who want to do it again and again, then there's no harm. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-umrah ila al-umrah kafara lima baynaha. That one Umrah between another Umrah, what is between them is expiation of sins that come between them. In other words, when you do an Umrah, which is a lesser Hajj, Allah rewards you abundantly. And if you commit sins and you make another Umrah, all your sins are wiped away. And likewise, the same thing goes for the Hajj, which is greater than the Umrah. So the Umrah and the Hajj, they go hand in hand, especially for the pilgrims of North America going to perform the Hajj, they do the Umrah and then the Hajj, and it's called Tabatta. So this is a binding duty, and it's only once a year like Christmas, that comes once a year. So the people who love Allah, the believers who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should not postpone, should not delay. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man hajj jihad al-bayt, walam yarfuf, walam yafsuqa. Whoever performs the pilgrimage to this holy house and does not commit evil and words of abomination, he returns home like the day his mother gave birth to him. And how does a mother give birth to a child? Sinless. All your sins are washed away. It's a one-stop occasion for sins to be completely obliterated. If you want your sins forgiven, and you make the intention, you go for Hajj, and you do the Hajj according to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All your sins will be washed away, and you'll be like a newborn babe. You start afresh from you. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Raja kiyama waladatu muhu." He returns home like the day his mother gave birth to him, sinless. Allah subhanahu wa taala. He gave the command to Ibrahim alayhi salam long before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into this world. When Ibrahim was in the desert, Allah said to him, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجْ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ دَامَرٍ يَأْتُونَ مِنْ كُلِّ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجْرٍ عَمِيكٍ He said, proclaim the pilgrimage. Go and call the people for the pilgrimage. Give the nida, call them. They will come. They will come walking. They will come riding on any lean camel from the mountain ways. They will come. So that they bear testimony and the benefits that Allah has prepared for them in this great hajj. Among them is total forgiveness. So this command was handed down from Ibrahim alayhi salam down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And today we apply the sunnah. Ibrahim alayhi salam in the tafsir of the ayah, he asked, Oh Lord, there is no one here. Who shall I call? He was in the desert. He said, You make the call and I will bring the people. So he went to make the call in the wide open desert. And today, so many people are going for Hajj that the great Haram, the great mosque, the grand mosque in Mecca, 
does not have the capacity. They do not have the capacity to accommodate the multitude of pilgrims that want to perform the Hajj. Many countries have restricted their Hajjis because the Saudi government has ordered that. Countries like Indonesia, with over 220 million, largest Muslim populated country in the world, Indonesia. If they should give them an open invitation for Hajj, over 20 million will want to come for Hajj. Pakistan, with over 150 million Muslims, if you give them an open invitation, over 10 million will want to come for Hajj. India, with another 160 million, lots of pilgrims want to come for Hajj, over 10 million will want to come. And so like Egypt, and so like Bangladesh, with over 100 million of people, and the government only allowed them 200,000 each. Yet, 200,000 for India, 200,000 from Bangladesh, 200,000 for Pakistan, 80,000 from Egypt, and yet, the harem does not have the capacity. It was the nida of Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَعَفْدٍ فِي النَّاسَ بِالْحَجِّ يَعْتُوكَ رِجَالٍ وَلَا كُلِّ دَوْمَنٍ يَعْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجْرَ عَمِيكٍ Proclaim the pilgrimage. They will come to you. Through the mountain ways. Walking and riding on any lean camel, they will come to you. Today, the government of Saudi Arabia have expanded the harm. And right now, the construction is going on. This harem, the Grand Mosque, can only hold about 1.5 million. They're expanding to accommodate 8 million. 8 million. So in a few years, they will relax the quota and allow more people to go for those who want to go. And they're building brand new hotels, providing all the facilities for the benefit of the pilgrims so they can perform their hajj in ease and in comfort. All you have to do, you have the means, go. Do not wait until old age comes over you. When your knees start to give away and you have back pain and you have neck pain and you can't move and you can't walk and you depend on others to assist you and help you, do not wait for old age to step in and sickness to step in and pains in your body. The best time to do it is when you're young and strong because Hajj is not an easy ordeal. It is not an easy way. It is very demanding of your health and your strength. You have to walk with the crowd. You have to move. And the facilities are limited. And the place is hot. And we're coming more in the summertime. Every year, the Islamic calendar moves back by about 11 to 12 days. And in about next 10 years, we will have Hajj in the hot months of July and August. June, July, and August. And for the next 15 to 20 years, it will be extremely hot. Oh, gathering of Muslims, do not wait, do not delay, perform your Hajj if you have the affordability. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was performing the Hajj and he was with the companions, he used to say very frequently, Khudu anni manasikakum, fal ali la al kakum bada ami hada. Take from me the rituals of your pilgrimage, the rites of your pilgrimage, for perhaps you may not see me after this year of years. And his words came true because just a few months after the Hajj that he performed, Allah took him away. He went to meet with the Rafiq al Ali. But he left a legacy how to perform the Hajj. Because the companions were eager to follow his footsteps, exactly what he did. And his warm words, he used to tell them, take from me the rituals of pilgrimage. And now do as I do. What you see me do, you do. The same thing he said in Salah. Sallu kama raitumun yusalli. Pray as you see me pray. So we learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how to perform the Salah, how to perform the Hajj. And this Hajj is not something to be taken lightly. It is a command from Allah and it's something great in the sight of Allah. Great, so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Hadith Qudsi, He descends to the lowest heaven in a manner befitting His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's boasting with the angels when He sees the pilgrims moving from Mina to Arafat and all dressed in white, all for the sake of Allah. 
They come for one purpose, one aim, one goal. Allah is saying, do you see my people? Do you see my creation? Do you see my servants? How are they going? How are they hymning my name and my praise? And they sing, Labaik Allahumma labaik. Labaik la sharika laka labaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. La sharika lak. I swear by my, by, my, by my own powers, my own authority, that there isn't anything that they will ask of me today except that I shall grant unto them. This is what Allah is boasting with the angels. Concerning the pilgrims, you are in a state of ihram. You've done the ihram because of Allah. For the sake of Allah, you left everything behind. And all you have on your body is two pieces of cloth. One on top, one at the bottom. Nothing else. And you walk in the path of Allah. And you glorify Allah. Praising Allah. Whether you're walking, whether you're riding, whether you're in a motor car, whether you're in a bus. From Mina going to Arafah. Which is about nine miles away. And you praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is boasting. He wants to forgive you. He wants to forgive you. It's a one-stop occasion for the total forgiveness of sins. And when you reach Arafah, that is the great day. The ninth of the Hijjah. The ninth of Zilhijjah is a very great day. It's the day of Arafah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on that great day, he left his legacy behind. Among the things he said to the people, among the things he said to the people, he reminded them about the Quran and Hadith. He said, Ayyuhan nas, inni tarikun fikum amrain, ma'in tamasaktum bihima lantadillu, kitab Allah wa sunnati. Oh my people, I am leaving two things among you. If you hold on to them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah, Quran, and my Sunnah, which is the authentic documented hadith. That was the legacy he left behind. And all the scholars of Islam, they have unanimously agreed that Islam is based on the foundation of the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah. So that day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his farewell khutbah to the people and he gave them so much advice and then he went with them back to me back to Muzdalifah and he spent the night in Muzdalifah and he prayed with them and he made dua and everywhere he stopped and Allah says Fathkur Allah and remember Allah Fathkur Allah in the Masjid al-Haram and remember Allah in the Masjid al-Haram which is in Muzdalifah every now and then Allah says and remember Allah and remember Allah so the whole Hajj is about Zikrullah the remembrance of Allah and to supplicate Allah and to make dua and to remember the glory and the power and the awe and the reverence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remember his bounties and favors upon you and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your dua will accept your hajj if you only perform it according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you do not do shortcut you don't take shortcut you have to have patience and people rush from place to place they want to beat the crowd, they want to do this, they want to do that, and they, and they miss many of the wajibat, and they miss many of the sunnah. They want to do a shortcut hajj. If you want your hajj to be acceptable, then you have to do it according to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, gathering of Muslims, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and think about the hajj. For those of you who have done it before, alhamdulillah, you want to go again? Now the government wants you to wait five years because they don't have space in Mecca. Five years before one hatch to another. And those of you who have never done it before, it's too late now. All closed off already. Think about it for next year, inshallah. And remember, it's a binding duty upon you. What some Muslims do sometimes, I know in a few, who have the money put aside for hajj, but the shaitan, May Allah forgive them and guide them. Get them in their mind. Why are you wasting so much money for Hajj? And they take the money and buy nice cars, beautiful cars, and uh, Wi Fi set up and, you know, jukeboxes and big things, musical instruments, cost about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And the Hajj, the best of Hajj package, does not exceed $10,000. And you get for nine, you get for eight, you get for seven, you get for six, depending on what you want. But, Oh, gathering of Muslims, the Hajj is incumbent upon you once you have the affordability. People can afford vacations to Europe and to the Caribbean in the cruise ship. 
and spend thousands and thousands of dollars and they can't afford to go for Hajj. They can't afford to go for Hajj. This is their excuse. They can't afford. They can't afford. But they're saying, I can't afford. But they can afford the vacations. Elaborate, expensive vacations, they can afford. Expensive cars, they can buy. Furnitures, they refurnish their homes with new furnitures, new machinery, new things in the kitchen, but they can't go for Hajj. So if you put Allah behind your back and put the amenities of this world in front of you, then you are in great loss indeed. But if you put Allah in front of you and put these behind you, inshallah Allah will love you and still give you those things that you want. It's a win-win situation. If you are a friend of Allah, Allah will be a friend to you. If you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. As Allah says, Fathkuruni athkurkum. Remember me and I will remember you. So always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and observe your duties toward Allah. Barakallahu lana fil Quran al-Kareem wa nafana wa iyaakum al-ayati wa dhikr al-Hakeem akulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah al-Azim ali wa lakum wa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-Ghafur rahim الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وأشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد أو gathering of Muslims حج is not an option for those who have the affordability it's a binding duty it's fard and is one of the great pillars of Islam from among the pillars that is mentioned in Bukhari and in Muslim and mentioned in the Quran. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was met with Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni mal Islam. He said, Oh Muhammad, tell me, what is Islam? He said, Islam, shahadatu wa la ilaha illallah, wa yikami salah, wa yitai zakah, wa sumu ramadan, wa hijjul bayt Allah al-haram, man istatai lai sabila. Islam, is to declare the shahada. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abdu rasulullah. And to establish prayers five times a day. And to give the zakah. And to perform fasting in Ramadan. And to perform the hajj for those who have the affordability. And when he said that, Jibreel a.s. confirmed and said, Sadaqta, you have spoken the truth. So this is a confirmation from Jibreel a.s. that these are the, the foundations of the religion of Islam. He did not say six, he found five. And we need to do the last one, which is not really the last one. It comes anywhere between. They are not in an order. Each one is independent. Each one of the fundamental pillars of this religion is independent. The salah is independent as far. The zakah is independent as far. The fasting is independent as far. And the hajj is independent. You don't do all these things and leave the Hajj for last, saying this is the last pillar. There's no such thing as first pillar and last pillar. There are five pillars of the religion of Islam, and Hajj is one of them. But it's customary people mention in their books, and they put Shahada first and Salah second, and they put the Hajj last. This is incorrect. Each one of them is individual, and each one of them is a fard. Whichever one you can perform. Sometimes you can't do the Zakat because you don't have the wealth. And sometimes you can do the Hajj. But you can't fast because you're sick in a way that you can't do away from food. But you can still perform the Hajj. So it has nothing to do with each one is independent. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathering of Muslims and think about the Hajj. Think about the seriousness of the Hajj. And hear the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wanted to send companions. He said, I wanted to gather companions and send them out to these outskirts. He was, he was in Medina when he mentioned this. I want to gather companions, people, and send them Hadi Lamsar to investigate the people who have wealth 
and they do not want to perform the Hajj. And he said, Ma humi Muslimin. Ma humi Muslimin. Hadith in Sahih Muslim. To investigate the people who have the wealth to perform the Hajj and they do not perform the Hajj, he said twice, They are not Muslims. They are not Muslims. Rasulullah is an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. They have no fear for Allah, they have no faith. Their faith is weak. Like the early Bedouins that came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, we are believers. We believe in Allah. Allah said, you're not believers. You are just Muslims. You're not believers. And Allah re revealed verses from the Quran regarding these people. When he says, قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا كُلَّمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ كُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّ يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانِ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ the desert Arabs, Allah said to them, they say we believe, we, we are believers, Mu'minun. Allah says, no, do not say you are believers, say you are Muslims, for faith has not yet entered your hearts. Faith has not yet entered your hearts. So Allah replied to them, don't say we are believers, say you are Muslims, because there's a big difference between a Muslim and a Mu'min. There's a big difference, like the heavens and the earth, like the sun and the moon, like between black and white between right and wrong. Big difference between a mu'min and a muslim. A mu'min is of a higher status than a muslim. We're all muslims. And Allah knows who is the mu'min. Allah knows the heart. Who is the believer, the true believer. The one who fears Allah in secrecy and in public. Allah knows who is the believer. The one who gets up at night, two o'clock in the morning, and after tahajjud. The one who comes to the masjid and pray. The one who gives the zakat. The one who gives the sadaqah with the right hand, so the left hand knows nothing about it. Allah knows the one who have true intention to go for the hajj. And they have the wealth and they go. Allah knows those people. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal-asri inna al Sana la fi khusr Illa alladhina amanu wa aminu salihati Wa tawasaw bilhaqi wa tawasaw bilsabr